All right, so let's do our quick overview of things that you should know in InDesign. First thing you're going to want to do is make sure, like when you see the workspace in current InDesign, it looks like this. Um, it's missing a lot of the normal stuff that's up at the top, so you want to fix that. Just go to Window, Workspace, and go to Classic, Essentials Classic. That's going to give you a number of things up here, but the most important thing is your reference point, or your I call it the anchor point. And what that does is when you flip an object, if I go object, transform, where's transform? Transform, and I'm going to flip horizontally. Okay, so the anchor point's up here. Let me undo that. However, if I put it in the center and I go object, uh, transform, flip horizontally, it flips it right where it's at. So that's super important that you have your anchor point or your reference point figured out. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> on like certification tests and whatnot, most of what you're going to do is, is takes place in window. It might be in the layers. Probably going to have to deal with the Pathfinder, which is in Object and Layout. That's when you're uh, combining things or uh, making things, um, well, whatever. I'll get to it in a sec. And then, of course, Transform is in there, too. Um, output is going to be important because that's where your pre-flight is. Um, pages, you're going to use that. Um, you're going to use styles probably the most and and probably 80 percent of the styles things are going to be object styles and you know you'll basically do your editing in here um, now with the actual test you should be able to just click on it a couple times whereas in the practice test or the simulation test it doesn't really work so it only gives you very limited options um, but let's look at some basic things that you should know, whether you're testing or just using the program. All right, so you'll notice when you put your, when you're on this selection tool, you put your, your cursor over the picture. If you get to that little center thing, it'll grab just the picture. Okay, so one of the things that you will find you need to do with InDesign is it's different than Photoshop. You put the picture in and the picture's there. Here, you put a frame in, and then you drop the picture into the frame. <clears throat> so that's kind of how InDesign works. Is you put the frame in there, and then you import or insert the picture. So when you need to do something to just the picture and not the frame, make sure it has the little brown selection box around it and not you know, this one here. So you want to make sure you grab just the picture. And of course, if I want to transform it, I can flip it or whatever. Um, but one of the important things to, to know in InDesign is fitting. If you want your picture to fit within the frame, that's in object. And if you go to fitting, you've got a bunch of different options. You got fill the frame proportionally. That'll kind of make it fit, you know, based on what it has to work with. Um, you might, let's see, go to fitting again. Um, you're going to fit the content proportionally. Okay, it's about the best it'll do because it is only this tall. So that probably is not what you want. Um, content aware fit. Let's see what that does. That didn't do anything. Okay, so, oh yeah, it did. So it looked at what was in the picture and it tried to make it work to what it thought was the best option. All right, so. Um, odds are you're going to probably use fill frame proportionately or maybe center the content, which is what I'm going to do with this one. So I'm going to click on this. Let me make sure, see how the picture is off center. If I come up to object fitting, I can center the content and it puts the whole picture centered within the frame. All right, other things. Overset text. This is something that you will see um, both in real life or in, and in tests. Um, you'll notice in the text box, there's a little plus down here. That means there's more text. So there's more down here. It's been cut off. So 
<clears throat> what we'll need to do is click on that to load it. Now in the, in the program in real life, you'll see that the text is there. Um, if there's already a text box, you can just click in the text box or you can make a new text box and have it fit. Um, other things that you need to know. Notice the text is going over the picture. <clears throat> so always remember, you, you wrap the picture, not the text. So you're wrapping the, the text around the picture. So when you go to do text wrap, you click on the thing you want to wrap it around. So I click on the picture. I can go up to window. I've got text wrap. And I've got some options here. This is where it is now. This is if I want to wrap it around the box. Or I can wrap around the object shape. Now in this case, it's the same thing. If there were an oval, I probably want that one. And that's why the picture on the little icon is there. And then I can change the distance here. So I'm just going to leave that at 2.5 or 0.25. <clears throat> All right. Other things that we need to know. Pre-flight. Um, obviously, pre-flight is in here in output. Think about pre-flight as <clears throat> when you're getting ready to take off on an airplane. They do their pre-flight checklist, and that's what this is. Um, before you print it or export it, you go into output and you do your pre-flight checklist. And pre-flight will tell you if there's something wrong. Now, in this one, it says there's overset text. Um, I can probably click on it and it'll tell me where it is. So I have overset text here, apparently. Um, because I did a text wrap, um, I do have some overset text. So... That's one way to uh, find out what's wrong with your, your document. And now the cool thing about the program is if you click on info down here, it'll tell you what the problem is and how to fix it. So I might need to resize the text frame or whatever it says to do. Okay. Um, you can also do your pre-flight uh, profiles and you would just come in here and I can tell it what things I want it to look for. Okay. So, um, I might need some text things. Maybe I want to have it look for paragraph style and character style overrides or whatever. Um, if there's a glyph missing. So I can do that. <clears throat> uh, let's see. <clears throat> Margins and slugs. So this kind of goes back to um, setting up the document. So if you're dealing with the margin or whatever, you're looking at the document presets. Um, actually, it could be document setup, but let me see. Presets, let's define them. Okay, that's not it. We want our document set up. That's what it is. Okay, <clears throat> so if I'm making a preset, I would go in the presets. Now you'll notice down here, I have my margins. I have my size of my paper, my orientation. That's the kind of stuff that's pretty basic. The bleed and slug. So the bleed is the part outside of what you want um, the paper to be. It's that just in case area. So typically the bleed gets cut off. When they make a document, they print it, but with the little extra in case it moves somehow, you don't have a white stripe on one side or the other. Uh, and then the slug <clears throat> would be the, um, the uh, stuff where the directions are for the printer. Okay, so that's gonna be in file. <clears throat> Let's see. Um, Hyperlinks, pretty simple. That's going to be an interactive. So I go to window again. Here's my hyperlinks. If I want to add a link, obviously I, I need to click on the thing that I'm trying to link. So I want, let's say this thing. I put in my hyperlink and then I can add in, let's say, let's see if it'll let me do it here. Okay. And then I add my link. So now I have a link on that rectangle. Okay. <clears throat> Pretty simple. Hyperlinks are not difficult. <clears throat> Pathfinder is one that you should know about as well. I'm going to undo this hyperlink. All right. So if I need to combine stuff in the Pathfinder, I've got two objects here. 
I'm going to make sure they're both selected. So it goes around both objects. Go to my window and my object and layout menu. And there's my Pathfinder along with transform. <clears throat> now you'll remember this. You've got combine. You've got subtract one from the other. You've got just the part where they intersect. And you've got exclude or cut out the parts where they overlap. So I'm going to click that one for this just to show you what it does. Okay, so they overlap right here and we get rid of it. Okay, um, I don't think I, I can undo it. I have to undo before I can combine them. So now I just combined them using the combine button. <clears throat> Pathfinder is pretty easy. Um, let's see, transform. <clears throat> let's say uh, I already kind of covered this, but let's say I want to transform this object. Um, it's going to go in here and I can go to transform. I can rotate the whole thing. I can flip it. Um, or I can go into window and in object and layout, it's there. Same thing. Now, this one's kind of important because when you go to transform, you can change your reference point in here. And this is the one in window. Um, you can change the size of the frame. And you can change the size of the picture inside. So if I want the picture to zoom in a little bit, I can go, oh, it's 110%. See how it changed the size of the picture? Um, let me undo that. All right. <clears throat> Transform's pretty easy. Um, now let's say I have this thing here, and I want to change the effect on it. So I go to my effect. X. That's not what I want. I want to go to the styles and I'm going to go to the object styles and I'm going to open up a basic graphic frame. Now, if I want to change any of the effects, here's the effects in here. There's a whole bunch of them. If I want to change the object itself, I've got all of these things here. Even if I want to change the way a picture fits in the frame, that's in here. If I want to change the text wrap, all of that stuff, basic attributes are here, but the effects are down here. Now there's a tricky part about the effects. You have in this drop-down menu, you can put an effect on the object, on the stroke, on the fill, or on the text. So if you just want to affect one thing about that object, um, you can maybe change the fill, or you could maybe change the stroke on the object, and then you can add an effect to just that. Okay, so that's super important. Make sure you know which one of those things you're putting the effect on. Okay, and of course, each one of these has a, its own menu, you know. So effects are a little tricky that way. Again, that's in window, and you go to um, the character, the, uh, sorry, the object styles. Um, <clears throat> you can also on a frame, let's do this frame, the picture frame. We can also go in here to styles. Almost everything can be done through the styles. Um, but let's say I want to change the frame. So I got my frame options. Let's see, I want an object frame. Um, so I can change the stroke on it and make that bigger. So you, so you can see it down here. Um, I can change all kinds of stuff. I can even change the corners on it. Let's say I want to have it rounded. I can round the corners on it and then you'll see it's rounded now. And I can change all the details on that. Um, I can change the color of the, the stroke. I can change the fill. All of that stuff is, is easy to change in there. Um, <laughs> now there is kind of a cool thing <coughs> if you want to edit text um, but have it be more of an object you can click on the text and you can go up to type and create outlines and what that does is it creates little points on the text and if I want to go in and, and edit the text I can let's see oh, maybe not all right. Well, I've made the outlines either way, but you can see that there's little little dots here. I can't really mess with them here. I, I think there's another tool. Maybe it's the pen tool. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's this tool. Um, 
so I can come in here, just like in InDesign or Illustrator, I can come in and edit these things. Okay, so that's why you would create outlines to be able to make your text into a shape and edit the shape. Um, probably the only other thing that you need to know is um, pages. So if you need to add pages, edit pages, if you look, go in this little thing, you can insert pages here, you can move pages, say I want to switch which page is where, you can move it you know, to different places. Um, and you can also apply parent pages if you have some presets um, I can apply a parent page. Now, I haven't made any parent pages, so I, I'm not going to do that, but I can go in and do that. Um, and, and if I had more than one page, I could apply different ones to each page. Um, I know it's a lot. I threw a lot at you. Um, but, uh, you know, those are kind of like the nuts and bolts of InDesign. Um, you might watch this a couple times. You might try and do it along with. If that helps, um, you can make your own document and... Uh, you're going to have to do that, you know, in real life and on the test. So you maybe you make a new document, you put some text in and your pictures. And, you know, that's kind of how I learned to use this program is I just sort of started doing things and I would figure it out as I went. So that should help. Um, that's your cool little tutorial on InDesign.